the next item is the asset management policy recommendation page 55 councillor cordover moves and seconded by councillor westwood councillor cordover thank you mayor um a very important policy update um although uh prosaic not too much controversial here but i do uh, specifically want to thank um, mr reeve and also our general manager for their their work on it. What we're looking at here is the is the update to the asset management policy as it's due for review, and uh, so as I said, uh, fairly fairly straightforward here. But the the asset management policy um, is developed in line with the local government act, and the main amendments to this policy are the rewording of the policy objective to better articulate what council aims to achieve and bring it more in line with contemporary asset management practices um, by emphasising the following asset management being driven by the services that council and the community want, environmental sustainability being embedded into the asset management process, reference to the use of smart technology to provide improved services and ability to better monitor the effectiveness of services, and community involvement is more clearly defined both on improved understanding of the services provided but also on their input into this process. I would like to invite uh, the author of this report, if I may, Mr Mayor, um, to provide any highlights or commentary around it uh, that um, Mr. Reeve sees fit. Mr. Reeve, highlights. Three mayor. <laughs> I usually only talk about highlights in my hair, but that's okay. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, part one of uh, the of report that will come back to council. So the, the second part of it will be the asset management strategy. Um, so there's a lot of linkages that actually happen with the strategic plan the asset management policy, the long-term financial plan, the asset management strategy and all the individual asset management plans as well. I think the thing if I was asked to actually highlight anything out of this particular policy is the viewpoint of everybody um, having their head around that it's not so much about the assets, it's about the services. Um, so the assets are just there to support the services there. Um, so certainly having that service service centric sort of viewpoint um, is really important um, when we consider all our things including all of our um, capital budgets and and the aspects of the long term long term financial plan that um, uh, that deals with um, assets as well at the same time um, certainly as councillor Cordover has mentioned there there's a couple of changes there and they're changes that have been driven by the environment that we're actually in at the moment as well at the same time there. So certainly we've done a bit more um, at looking at where we can look at the environmental sustainable practices there. Um, councils would be well aware of the fact that uh, we've been using um, particular products in our roads there that are reducing um, single-use plastic bags, for example, there. Uh, we look at where we can use um, recycled plastics as well in some of our materials such as seats and bits and pieces like that. And that'll only become a, a, a larger thing going forward as well at the same time there. Um, new technology is the other aspect as well. Um, you can see the world around there. Um, it's changing all the time there. Um, it's only just recently that we've actually updated all of our street lights in the city to LED lights. Um, so apart from a saving to the community in terms of financial saving there, it's also a, a better product as well at the same time. So these are all the types of things that actually go into um, what underpins the policy. So the policy itself has the, has the broad statements, but they're some of the, the things that might actually come out of that as well at the same time. Thank you. Very well said, and I support the motion. Over to you. <laughs> Next is Councillor Grace. Yeah, 